I want to talk to you a little bit about using your phone as a webcam. Lately, I've had a lot of difficulties with my webcam. I use a Logitech Brio. However, it's not been without its problems, whether it's having an extremely yellow screen or in not being able to get it right or putting it on manual settings and not being able to get the color balance or the temperature correct. It's just been a nightmare and the focus really isn't all that awesome. I'm using Debrio right now during this intro and um, I think I got a better fix. I'm going to try using my phone as a webcam and see how that goes. So right now I have the Brio set to be automatically focused, automatic white balance, and automatic color correction. And if I put it on manual settings, it's almost impossible to get even this good because the settings, it's just, it's really finicky. I really have a lot of difficulty with it. Uh, it tends to tends to end up being very warm or very cold, extremely cold, and warm so much that it's just yellow, and cold so much that it's just blue. It caused me to want to look around. So I started looking around at SLRs like all the big kids are using. However, I'm hearing a lot of creators talking about using their mobile device, mobile phone, as a webcam. Now, I do know that when I take pictures in this office with my phone camera, it turns out pretty nice. And uh, I've even tweeted recently about how frustrated I was that my, my phone does a better job than my $200 webcam. So I'm gonna do some comparisons. I'm gonna show you how I got it working. And also then at the end, I'll cover some pros and cons of the Brio as well as the my phone. I'm gonna do all of this at uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is what I'm at right now. So 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second, I'll do that with the phone and with the Brio and kind of do some comparisons. To start, you'll want to go to the website for iVCam. I'll put the link down in the show notes. And then you'll download the software for the appropriate operating system and go through the installation steps. After installation, and you launch the application, you'll find that it's waiting for a connection. So it's waiting to connect to the corresponding application on the mobile device. Once that's launched, then the camera will be linked up and it's using Wi-Fi initially, or if you wanted to, you could connect it via a cable and then turn on uh, USB debugging on the mobile device and do it that way. Um, however, uh, in this example, I'm showing connecting over Wi-Fi. There are also some corresponding settings, so you can select the resolution and the frame rate and some other minor settings to, to change to fit your needs. There's also settings so that you can tweak the picture itself, and that would include your ISO, your white balance, the focus, as well as uh, some other things. So you can, you can also tweak those to fit your needs. On your mobile device, you'll go to the corresponding software store. Uh, for instance, searching on the Android Marketplace for iVCam and then selecting it and installing as you would any other application. All right, so now this is actually the phone cam. You'll notice that right up here, I've got the little watermark for IV cam. That is the software that I'm using to do this. Uh, now that doesn't have to stay there. If you pay the license fee, I think it's $9.99 a year or $24.99 for lifetime, then you can gain some additional benefits of IV cam and you can get this watermark up here removed. Um, I didn't do that yet, so uh, I just, I figured since I'm going to do the video and I'm going to be talking about IV cam, might as well have the name up there while I'm showing the IV cam. It lets you know that I'm actually using the phone right now. So that being said, this is the phone. Right off the bat, I can notice a couple things. One is I can notice that the background behind me is nice and blurry. Um, it's creating that bouquet effect to kind of set me back from the backdrop. So it's giving a little bit more depth and, and I am more in focus here right in front of the camera. Another thing is, is the focus is a lot stronger on the phone versus the Brio webcam. There's a, there's a huge difference in the focus. Whereas with the webcam, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more gracious uh, for, for aging. However, there's something to be said for either case, right? Either, either making it a little bit softer or making it a little bit more in focus. So anyway, this is the phone cam. 
Okay, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the, with the Pixel and with the Brio to kind of compare the two of them. Uh, right off the bat, I notice, of course, that there is the blurred background with the Pixel, but with the Brio, the background is right in focus. Um, the, it does seem a little bit more crisp behind me, but that's to be expected because the Pixel 6 uh, does a little bit better job of, of the depth of field. Um, also, looking at me, I see that in the Pixel 6, I am a lot more in focus than I am with the Brio. Um, and, but the Brio has a lot more reds. Again, it's bringing in, um, you know, I think, the, I think the Pixel 6 is a little bit washed out on my skin tone right now. However, the Brio is very red. And um, I've got all of them set to auto right now, so they are going auto. If I hold up my hand, you'll see that the focus kind of comes in. You know, and you can see the focus there. Um, even looking at that, you know, you can see that the Brio is, is in fact focusing, but it's not gonna focus back on me. Okay, so there, now the Brio's back. So initially, here is my take. The pros for the Pixel 6 is definitely a clearer picture, and the color temperatures are much better with the Pixel. It's also very consistent from one time of using it to the next time using it, it's the same settings. Each time it's exactly the same. It's also got a very responsive focus. If I want to show something close to the camera, I can do that and then it focuses right back on me very quickly. The field of view is amazing in the Pixel. It's uh, blurred out the background a little bit so you get that bokeh effect. And as a speaker, it separates me from the background and makes it a lot easier for viewers of video to be able to focus more on the presenter. Also with the Pixel, it's cheaper. Chances are you already have a mobile phone in your pocket, so there's no real investment to use it as a webcam other than potentially the software. As the cons for the Pixel, I put, have set up time as being a con there because since the Pixel is generally in my pocket or sitting on my desk, I do need to mount it in a bracket in order to use it as a webcam. One thing to note is in order to get the bokeh effect where the background is a little bit blurred, is I do have to zoom in. So with the Pixel 6, I had to zoom into a, a level of 10. If I put it on a level of nine, it, it uses a different camera built into the phone and the picture is not near the quality. Now for the Brio, some of the pros, uh, first it's an easier setup. Chances are your webcam is already hooked up to your computer all the time. So you don't really have to do any setup. It's just there. Another pro is that uh, Logitech does have some pretty good software called G-Hub, and it's not bad. Uh, one thing to note, though, is although the software is pretty amazing and it does a good job setting up the camera and tweaking it, you have to do it every single time you turn on the webcam or every single time you reboot your PC. And that's also one of the cons of the Brio is that it, it takes setup every single time you reboot your PC, every single time you hook up the camera, you have to tweak the settings yet again, so that way it, it goes back to where it's, it's what you want, what you expect. So it's very inconsistent in, in its picture quality and the color and settings and everything else. The colors do tend to be a little bit too warm, so that I consider that a con, because although it is it is nice to have a warm picture sometimes, you don't always want that. So, uh, so while it can be a plus sometimes, it's not always a plus. And also, the picture can tend to be oversaturated quite a bit, so you have to turn back the saturation quite a bit to get a, a more realistic picture. Also with the Brio, another con is the focus. The autofocus has a very tough time fluctuating. So if it, once it's focused on something, if you put something close to the camera so it, you can show something close up, then the Brio does kind of struggle getting back to where you want it. Another thing to note about the Brio is it is expensive. Even in terms of webcams, you can pick up a Scene 920 for about 60 bucks maybe. Uh, whereas the Brio is $150 to $200. So it is expensive in terms of webcam. So thank you for watching. I hope you found something useful. This was a great experiment for me. I think I now have a new camera set up. So using the Pixel 6 instead of using the Brio, um, I'll probably still use the Brio for some B-roll or maybe as a side cam or something like that. But that being said, the phone does a much better job and may uh, may help me postpone my purchase of an SLR until some future date because 
I don't know if it's actually better than what I'm getting with the Pixel 6. If you found this video helpful, please like and also uh, subscribe. Click the button down below to subscribe so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. And uh, thank you so much for coming by.